Hello. Um, we were fish once and now we are fish with an alphabet. A, B, C, D. So yeah, let's start there. Um, I like to think of myself in a way as a new paradigm fish. The fish that left the water and crawled onto the beach, that was in a new paradigm, a whole different spectrum, a whole different place to be, cognitively speaking and physically speaking, biologically speaking, um, you know. And that fish evolved into this new spectrum. It evolved and it evolved up into a language. And it created an alphabet about its phonetic makeup um, and all the different shapes we could make, etc. Um, a E I O U, um, I, um, phenomenology. Language has come up out of fish. Anyway, and that's a great thing. You know, we're an amazing species. No other species, um, you know, sets precedent like we do, the human species. No other species has an alphabet that we can see. And that's the greatest legacy of our species. And our species is in a dark place at the moment because we are a fish that has been pushed forward by a metaphysical source. This is the spiritual source that we feel inside us, but this is a very complex source. It can't be just left to prayer, basically, you know, or umming and chanting and meditation. We have to find this source through ego, through the metaphysical um, side of the ego. Anyway, um, we are all one being fragmented into seven billion heads. And there's no separation. Separation cannot be shown mathematically. Separation cannot be shown. And if separation cannot be shown, then you cannot isolate yourself as an individual because you cannot just outline your body and say, this is my nose and my arm, etc. Because it has an atomic foundation and this eye is fooling you and etc, etc. I'm not going into that. Digressing. Anyway, so the human ego, I, you know, I like to look at the world I live in. Um, it's so important that we understand the human ego. And before we get into the realms of metaphysics with it, we have to learn to take hold of the ego that we're living in. We have been given the gift of symmetry, of geometry. Our eye is a geometrical eye. It is not for drawing, simply for drawing squares to build bridges. It is for squaring up reality, more importantly. The ego, the geometrical side of the, the eye, the seeing eye, can find symmetry with the circle of completion. We can find symmetry with reality. It's why we understand um, notions like Nazism had no symmetry. There was no geometry in the mind. We couldn't align ourselves with it, biologically, metaphysically speaking, spiritually speaking, physically speaking. There was no genetic program that could carry it. The same with the mon monarchy. At monarchies all over the world, none of them have ever been able to draw a distinguishing factor that separated them from the red blood, the blue blood from the red. It was all dinky finger out and uh, silver plates and horse riding and uh, speaking like this. But that's all nonsense. I mean, that's that's their argument. And that's the argument of a monkey. Anyway, we come up out of fish, true monkey. And we've arrived at man. A man got stuck in an ego. God got stuck in seven billion egos and is trying to refine that ego. And it has the ability. It has a symmetrical eye. It has a geometrical eye. Like I said, we can, we can scope. We can look at the entire scope and scale of capitalism and the eye, the geometrical eye can search it out and square itself up by it. And when it looks at the whole spectrum that is capitalism, all the variables that carry it right across the spectrum, its entire scope, it intuitively registers as imbalance for a species that desires balance, etc. It creates, it's a, it's a spectrum of exploitation that serves the few. It actually doesn't serve them, ironically. It gives them, you know, faster cars to drive around in and 50 bedrooms. I mean, pathetic. Anyway, um, so yeah. Anyway, I like to think of the world as an orchestra, you know, so let's orchestrate, let's orchestrate the ego. We all have to become our own conductors in this orchestra of life. We're all instruments. The human ego is an instrument, a very delicate, sensitive instrument. And it has to be played. All good music, all fluency in music requires sensitivity and precision. All, you know, all, all our understanding requires sensitivity and precision. Intelligence, that's the foundation. Sens to be sensitive to the square and precise by it. To be sensitive to the atom and, atom and precise by it. To be sensitive to the spectrums that carry us ideologically in a good way and precise by it. That's utopia. But anyway, another story. And it's all about symmetry, the symmetrical eye. What a very powerful eye this is. So yeah, we're an orchestra. Now, let's consider all the different instruments in this orchestra to make up our world. Let's consider the cellist. Pretend, let's draw an analogy with the cellist. Pretend the cellist is a, a barrister. And that barrister on this day at someone's table is signing contracts that will remove land from babies in Afghanistan, etc. Or bombs will drop. So that barrister has blood on his hands or her hands. And right now that cellist, that cello, is playing out of tune. It's discordant with our nature. Okay, it knocks the entire ontology of our, our nature out of play. So the cellist is all out of tune. But the same barrister goes home that evening to his children. And, you know, he's a loving dad. He's a loving man. He's a loving husband. 
And in that environment, the cello's back in tune. Okay, so the human ego is capable of, you know, humility and arrogance. It's capable of balance and imbalance by degree right across the scope. So if we look at the violinists in the orchestra, pretend they're the soldiers and they all go off to war and now the violinists are all out of tune in the orchestra because they're bombing and killing children, etc. And all their instruments have been knocked out of play. The same soldiers come home. They love their children. They love their wives. They love their mums. They hug their mums. Now the violin is back in tune because they're good again. Their hearts are in place. They meant well in the first place. A lot of people mean well in the first place. Very few are psych- you know, you know, pathological psychopaths like the top of the elite of the elite. Anyway, another story. So the orchestra is a seven billion instruments. Now, we cannot afford a conductor because a conductor is a dictator, those who would dictate to you. So we have to learn to conduct ourselves. We have to learn to conduct ourselves to play in this orchestra so the orchestra can be brought into tune. This is what ontology is about, is to find the structure of the human ego, the absolute symmetry of the human ego so we can pull all instruments into the sensitive fluency that's needed and required to live with each other in a utopian framework, in a utopian spectrum. And then we can move forward from there and plug the ego into the metaphysical realm because we will be in a more balanced state when we understand the orchestra. So anyway, we are all conductors. We conduct ourselves on a daily basis. And the human ego is plugged in and it understands balance and imbalance in relation to the environment and one another. Okay, And that imbalance is arrogance and balance is humility. To be humble to what we are, to be humble to how magnificent we are, that we have an alphabet. A, B, C, D has allowed us to move into wider realms of knowledge. You know, that's why I'm flowing here, because I followed the correct path, the path of knowledge. So, yeah, anyway, so learn to conduct yourself. Learn to sit down and breathe a bit more and do some yoga. Apply that to your life. Okay, learn to think more. Learn to sit down and think more about how your mind is designed geometrically to square up reality. If you cannot spell squaring or geometry, it's a, that's second to that fact. It's like saying Bruce Lee could not spell Kung Fu, so in school he, he fails. But the fact that he can do the Kung Fu, that's where the fluency is. And all human beings have a geometrical eye, and that gives us dominance on this planet. Uh, it's an amazing measurement. Anyway, so I'll leave it on that note. So learn to conduct yourself so we can pull this beautiful, beautiful orchestra that we are into play, and we can play all the harmonies till the, the sun comes up again. Peace and love paradigm, new paradigm fish.